I started painting because of observation. I was having a very difficult time as a youth. I was a troubled youth. I did not grow up in a very wealthy part of the country, had lots of issues. And one day I was, I was walking down the street while I was in the military and I saw a postcard and that postcard affected me very deeply, aesthetically. So I needed to create that. So I went back to barracks. I went to a store, bought a painting kit and taught myself how to paint. Over the next four years, I taught myself to be an artist. Once I got out of the military, I retired to a basement for about two years and with a bunch of books and taught myself how to paint. If you had to sum it up in like a sentence, what would you say that your artwork represents? Recovery. Be cliche, but I create images that reflect my existence on this planet so that in essence, artwork become the forehead of humanity. If you want to feel if the society's got a fever, then you look at its artists and what they're creating. You can do that right now. What, what kind of art is being created right now? Horrific, dark rap that talks about beating people up. I mean, if you look at that artwork, that's what's happening in our culture today. And that's what we see in the artwork. We're a very ill culture. And it's reflected in its work. That's what I do. Well, most of my work has been done before the days of the internet. So a lot of my stuff is gone. But I think there was one painting I did called Hope that was a turning point piece in my life. That picture is hanging somewhere in North Carolina, I think. But the one, there's another one called uh, Beatable. It's a German term. It was a strong catalyst in my own personal growth. There's one on the internet you can see that was, it was in a show a couple of years ago about recovery. It's called The Crucifixion. It's on the internet, you can see it. So as an artist, do you see art as a good outlet for emotions? It is an imperative outlet for emotions, absolutely. Would you recommend it as a bonding activity for a group of friends, maybe even a larger group, or even as big as a community? Oh, absolutely. Collaboration is a beautiful way of getting to know one another and also getting multiple imaginations and create a magnificent work of art. You believe that art can help a community become unified, per se? Actually, I'll go farther than that. Art is absolutely required for a community to survive. A society without art or without creative expression is a society that will die a very slow and painful death, which is what we, we've witnessed this across the world. The first thing that happens when a country gets invaded is they destroy the artwork. Isn't it my right? Mm -hmm. The Nazis stole it from all over the world. When you destroy art or you infiltrate it with something that's trash, you rip away a very cohesiveness of the community, thus making it easier for the community to separate. It destroys the culture. It's like building a house on sand versus building a house on, on concrete. Um, a cultural foundation where I grew up, I grew up a split existence. I grew up part of it in the United States, part of it in Germany. One of the lovely things I loved about Germany is the culture was a thousand years old. I go to fox celebrations and wine fests that have been done since the year 600. I go to mass in a church that was built 800 years ago. You know, 600 years before this country was born, this stone was being that's a cultural heritage and a foundation that goes really, really deep and is very difficult to destroy. Whereas if you have a very weak culture or a culture that's been whittled away, then that's, that's a society that's very, very weak. And so people tend to separate. They get divided of what we are experiencing right now. We have divided this country more than anything can be. A lot of that is due to the lack of quality artistic expression in the community. They have no other way of, dis of expressing themselves other than violence. Turn violence into something productive, and you take a potential inmate in a penitentiary and turn him into an artist on the cover of Art in America. Have you ever actually done any artwork for a community? Yes, lots of stuff. I've done lots of outdoor work. for I've had a couple of universities that commissioned me to do some outdoor sculptures. I did those. I've done murals, a lot of murals, actually. I do, not, I do a lot of donation to the community. I've done a lot of teaching to young people, worked a lot with youth, helping them to channel their aggression into creativity and turning them from, like I said, from juvenile delinquents into artists. <laughs> if you if you to see Kreuzigung, the crucifixion on the internet, that's the one that toured the state. I don't know how, how deep you can get into this, but my artwork was very important for me to recover from mental illness. Uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, I don't have a problem talking about that, Asperger's syndrome, the things that I have a service dog, you probably heard her whine, and this is a PTSD service animal. She does a lot of good work for me. One of the things that keeps me going was the fact that I spent 30 years exploring my world via the visual arts.
and I literally painted my way into recovery. So I, right now I'm going to college. I'm a grad student at Lindsay Wilson studying what? Well, studying psychotherapy. And my goal is to become a certified art therapist. I'm going to help people use art to recover from their illnesses and t- take a negative and turn it into a positive. So when, I, when you look at that piece, uh, Kleitzigum represents um, the dead center of post-traumatic stress disorder. It is a very painful, painful picture but it's a self-portrait of where I was 15 years ago. Now you take that portrait 15 years ago and you add years of exploration of the inner of the inner person into an understanding that then you can process, put on the shelf like a library book, and now I can stand here today a normal person. If I didn't have that, where would I be? You can look at my colleagues. A lot of my colleagues are now alcoholics, they're drug addicts, they're criminals, they're in prisons. I'm neither of that, none of that, because I was able to get rid of it with the arts. And so I, a lot of the arts I called contemporary expressionism or the neue Reiter, the new writer, as we created in Berlin in 92, was a way of taking inside personal expression and painting it honestly onto canvas. It's almost like mentally throwing up on the canvas and it's out of you. But then you can look at it, interpret it and go, why is this happening? What can I change in my life to make me paint, make me need to paint roses or flowers? Why do I have to paint death and dying? Today I paint roses and flowers <laughs> because I spent so many years painting death and dying. And that's, I would, that's my point where it was the art that can be excruciatingly therapeutic and very healthy, not only for a mental, mental patient, mentally ill people, people with substance abuse problems, people with societal issues, people with family problems, learning it, painting about it, expressing it, exhibiting it causes recovery. And that's not only on a personal level, but on a societal level, on a community level. Imagine what we could do if we could turn these streets into cobblestone streets and put fancy light poles up there. How pleasant it would be to walk down the street in Bonneville. Today, we look at concrete and steel. Concrete and steel is cold and boring and impersonal. What if we decorate it really, really nicely? It would be a pleasure to come and walk into town, have a little coffee sitting in a nice place. But I've been preaching about that for decades. Unfortunately, my grandfather didn't have the recorder, but unfortunately, my grandfather was one that picked out the, the floor plan of that courthouse completely and brutally out of place. We needed an old-fashioned one with a dome and a bell. Can you imagine the sound of the bell ding every hour or so? But it'd be beautiful. It'd be elegant. It would be elegant. It would be quaint. It would be comfortable. That's why people like to go to places like, you know, St. Augustine, Florida. They don't have concrete steel. They've got stone. And actual effort was then created. A beautiful ambiance. It's like its own form of artwork. It is artwork. Architecture is a very, very strong artwork. Is that cool? Yeah. yeah. I understand that. We'd like to thank you for this interview. You're welcome.